Tonight, the Hoosiers, not losers. Indiana gets an 80 to 65 victory over Illinois and one of the best wins on the road of the Mike Woodson era. We are here in Las Vegas. Indiana has made the trip to the entertainment capital of the world and it's sure to be quite a show this evening at the MGM Grand. The Shifayim Kibbutz offers many opportunities for Maccabi USA athletes to socialize and relax. In the arcade room. Chilling by the Sandy Beach Volleyball Court or taking a quick walk from the kibbutz to see the beautiful Mediterranean Sea. Griffin Epstein in Albany for a special edition of the Hoosier Report as the Indiana men's basketball team gets set to start its NCAA tournament play tomorrow. The U.S. is going to the gold medal match. Griffin Epstein alongside Zach Gershman here from Maccabi Media. Zach, the U.S. comes from behind to defeat Argentina 2-1. to one. Really a remarkable turnaround today for the United States. Thanks, Austin. Well, indeed, two important people here. I'm with Athletic Director Scott Dolson and the president of Indiana University, Pam Witten. We're out of the timeout. It'll be Maryland basketball and their black uniforms, Hoosiers in their cream uniforms. Maryland will get it into Jahari Long, point guard off the bench for the Terps. Reese around his screen, driving to the paint, stripped from behind by Bates and falls to Jalen and Shafino. He gets it ahead to Bates, he'll hold it up there for the Hoosiers. Indiana trying to take the lead with 13 minutes remaining. In the hands of the Big Ten freshman of the year, Jalen Hood Shafino. He's around a screen, gets it to Miller, caught top of the key for the Hoosiers. Inside to Jackson Davis on the left block, expended. Backing down, double team, Miller, cop, left corner, three, air ball, but Renew pulls it down, blocked from behind, though, by Scott. Terps basketball, what a play by Scott. Maryland the other way, all knotted at 43. Who can break the deadlock? Oh, Hart behind the back. Fancy footwork into the lane, but Bates stays with him. Now backing down Bates, back out to Young. They quickly go back down to Hart, spinning again in the lane off the glass, doesn't go, Hart on the floor, no whistle, pulled down by Cop. Indiana basketball. Hoosiers head the other way, tied at 43, Shafino around his screen, floater in the lane, he's bumped, and a foul on Maryland on the shot, it'll be two free throws for Jalen Hood Shafino, they're trying to give Indiana its first lead of the second half. Well, if that's on Reese, it's four. Hmm. I believe it is. Yes, it is. Wow. I think we were both a little surprised. Kevin Willard just left him in the game when he got his third foul. That is a huge, huge play in this game. Reese has been really good defensively down low. So Shafino misses the first three throw off the front iron. Maryland's going to make a parade of changes here. Three guys coming off the bench, three out. Carry long and... The aforementioned Julian Reese will all take a seat. We probably won't see Julian Reese in another five, five plus minutes, you'd think, yeah. with four fouls. Second for Hood Shafino, nothing but net. So the Hoosiers take the lead. 44 43 with 12 20 left to play here from Chicago. Spot in the Big Ten tournament semifinals on the line. Terps basketball. Running the weave at the top of the key. It's Young. He's got a scheme. Driving into the lane. Gets to the corner. Hart for three. Brack Iron no good. Bouncing around and it falls to Renew. Indiana basketball. Huchafino will bring it up for the Hoosiers and slow it down. 12 minutes left to play. Huchafino around his screen at the three throw line. Driving in. Double pumps. Front iron shot. Does it go? Offensive board. Jackson Davis lays it in. And one. The hoop. And the harm by TJD. Timeout on the floor, 46-43. Indiana in front, and the momentum on the side of the Cream and Crimson. 11-54 left to play from Chicago. Back on the other side on WIUX 99.1. Welcome back to Bill Armstrong Stadium in Bloomington. Nil-nil the score between Indiana and Marshall in front of a Large crowd on this Sunday night, the mist and rain, which was blowing around for two hours before the game. The first 15, 30 minutes have subsided. Dry now, a little bit chilly, and Austin, this is going to be a fun last 45 minutes. Yeah, absolutely, considering what's at stake for both these teams, a spot in the Elite Eight on the line. Of course, Indiana's got that match 18 months ago in the back of their heads, and Marshall trying to really compose themselves and turn themselves into a blue blood. We don't talk about this, but 
Marshall's a team that historically has not been all too good until late, and we know Indiana, the eight college cups, second most all time, only behind SLU, of course, the team who they just knocked out. So it's kind of a, I don't want to say master versus apprentice, but it's a, it's a team with a lot of history versus a team that's trying to get to that standard and certainly has the players and the talent and the coaching as well to get them there. Curious to see what this second half brings. Well, if you're just joining us, it was a back and forth first half. Indiana got off to a hot, hot start. Marshall, felt like they settled more into the match. Coach Grassi talked to Audrey, certainly felt that way. But Indiana had some good looks late in the half as well, brought some momentum into the locker room. It's five shots to four, Indiana to Marshalls. Only two shots on frame, both to the Hoosiers. The big difference, the corner kicks. Ten corners for Indiana and none for Marshall. 45 minutes, but maybe more to decide a spot in the NCAA quarterfinals. Just three more spots to be filled well, tonight. Is this great nation? This great time to be a soccer fan. World Cup, NCAA tournament, what more can you ask? Teams will sit sides of the field. Wind has settled down as well. Oh, bad turnover that falls to McDonald. Witten Brink. Win and Brink with some space. We'll see Eunice clears it away. Right side, Sassock. Forward for Endely. The Hoosiers will play it back. What do you want to see from both sides? Austin, what do both sides need to do to try to come away with a win today? I think Indiana, they have to be a bit more clinical in the final third. Tried to do so here, Sessok into the box, and just comfortably cleared away Corner kick by Indiana Bamford on the back end. Be taken by number, 18, I think number one is, be, of course, get the quality in the final third, especially with the 10 corners, the previous ones, yeah. this being 11, have to be a bit better. Brink has delivered most of them. Brink will take the corner at the flag for slipping sides of the field. Dangerous right foot of Winbrink. He is red hot for the Hoosiers. Last six games has a point in every game. Three goals, three assists. Winbrink into the box. Far post score! <laughs> Brett Beebe gives Indiana a 1-0 lead. Another look, Austin. There's that quality in the final third. BB just wins his header against the height right at the top of the six, and what a time to score such a big goal. Didn't have the best first half maybe on his accounts on the defensive end, but definitely made up for it. What a great delivery by Wittenbrink. It only takes him some time. He'll get enough chances, and finally Indiana does in fact get that goal. So oh. Took him to the 76th minute last week against SLU. This time, barely two minutes into this second half. The corner kicks finally pay off. They had 10 corners in the first half, couldn't score on the first of the second half. Winning Brink with the assist. Brent BB with his third goal of the season, just his fourth of his career. The senior defenseman out of Shorewood, Illinois, with a moment he'll never forget, especially if Indiana holds this lead. Ceruto goes to third. Jesse is out. Pine comes to the plate with two outs, swings at the first pitch, pops it up and out of play. So for a third inning, Indiana has a runner at third with two outs. Weren't able to bring him home the first two times. See if it's different this time. These three innings feel like a carbon copy nearly of themselves. The 0-1 to Pine. This is outside, one and one. Just three hits today for the Hoosiers, one in the first, one in the third, and now one in the sixth. All three times the runner has advanced over to third, but not been able to make it home. 1-1 one, one count to Josh Pine. Staley Rennies and the pitch. This is outside, 2-1. and one. The next pitch for Travis Staley will be pitch number 90. There is 
and arms starting to warm up in the Texas pen. It's Heston Toll, Arkansas transfer, who we saw on Friday. The 2-1, swung on, popped up down the left field line, and it will get out of play onto the food truck concourse behind the left field seats. Ailey takes his time on the mound, resets, adjusts the brow, wipes away some sweat with temperatures in close to 80 degrees now on this afternoon and a humid overcast day. 2-2 two -two count to Pine with two outs here in the sixth. Staley at the belt, kicks and throws. Swung on and popped up foul by Pine. He stays alive. Good fight here between Travis Staley and Josh Pine and what I'd I think it's very likely the last inning that Staley will throw to deck. Hoosiers trail two to nothing. Tying run at the plate in the form of Pine. The 2-2 two -two misses well outside for ball three. Ninety-four miles per hour on the fastball. That's impressive velo from Staley. Nearly 100 pitches now into his outing. Payoff pitch coming now to Pop. Staley readies. Peering in. Kicks and throws. Swung on a chopper up the middle. Diving is the shortstop daily. He won't get there. Into center field. Ceruto scores. And the Hoosiers have a run across and cut the lead in half. It's 2-1. to one. Finally, something goes the Hoosiers way off the end of the bat of Pine. Just made enough contact, and it just skips out of the infield past the diving shortstop, Mitchell Daly. Ceruto scores, and the Hoosiers get a much-needed run here in the sixth and keep the inning going. Here with Carter Matheson. Carter, a two-home run day for you to lead IU to a win over Illinois. How are you feeling right now? I feel great. It's a big win. They're a good team, and we competed well. You now have 13 home runs on the season. You're one shy of the IU freshman record with this Alex Dickerson, an MLB player. Have you been keeping track of that? What's been the key to your power? No, I don't keep track of it at all. I just hit the ball where it's pitched, and wherever it goes, it goes. Well, you guys now have back-to-back -back Big Ten Series wins, and you beat a really good Illinois team. What's been the key the last couple weekends for you guys? Just never giving up, you know, competing all game, and the game's never over, so just never giving up. Offense has been electric, one month left to go. How do you guys keep it up, make the Big Ten Tournament? Just keep competing up at the plate, don't throw away at bats, and just do what we've always done all year. Congratulations, Carter, awesome game. Tonight, the Hoosiers, not losers. Indiana gets an 80-65 to victory over Illinois and one of the best wins on the road of the Mike Woodson era. For the Hoosiers, it all started with Trace Jackson Davis. 35 points, a Big Ten career high. My thing is to put him in position to be successful. You know, he's got to finish it. And I thought tonight, you know, we, we went to him. I mean, I rode him. I, he went 90, 80 from 90% of the plays was geared to, to get him the ball. Illinois and Brandon Underwood decided not to double. It did not pay off. Trace Jackson Davis now nearly fully healthy from his injury dominated, especially in the second half after Illinois cut the deficit to 10 at the half. Jackson Davis's dominance in the first five minutes of the second half, key to an IU victory. Yeah, before the game, you said they probably won't start off doubling you, and so uh, you just got to go play, and so that's what I did, and then they just never sent it. Um, sometimes they crowd a little bit, and I kicked it out or kicked it to JG or tried to make the right play, but most of the night they let me get crab dribble to the middle. After three straight losses to start 2023, suddenly Indiana on a two-game win streak. What's changed for the Hoosiers? Well, it starts on defense. And we just needed time to just figure things out. Um, a lot of people wrote us off because of those two games, but um, I mean, we're still three and four, and we just gotta keep grinding. An impressive victory for the Hoosiers. Indiana, a chance for a three-game win streak now as they head to Michigan State on Sunday after silencing the crowd on the road here in the State Farm Center. Certainly today, the Hoosiers are no losers. In the State Farm Center, reporting for the Hoosier Network, Griffin Epstein.